coming. Uh, my name is Wei Jian. Uh, I'm from Singapore, uh, doing some privacy stuff at the EF. And today, I'm, it's a, my honor to share with you my work on the past four months uh, to build a mixer during, using zero knowledge proofs. Can you talk louder? Okay. Uh, there's no mic, right? Uh, I'll try to. Can you hear me in the back? It helps if you said the word. Yeah? Can you hear me in the back? No, no. Can't hear you. No, you can't. Guys, can you close the door? Okay. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, around uh, the middle of last year, the middle of this year, there was a lot of like activity on Twitter. Uh, a lot of people talking about mixers because Vitalik posted a, a hack and D and uh, uh, a means push out for people to build mixers on Ethereum and uh, there was a bit of a mixer renaissance where we saw a lot of interest in the space. Um, so today I'm going to show you one of the mixers that, that, I, uh, that is out there that I built uh, along with Barry Pike Hat and Kobe Gurkhan and we built this on a zero knowledge uh, signaling gadget called Semaphore and I'll explain that later. Uh, but before we do this, I just want to give a high level um, discussion about why do we need privacy on Ethereum? And the usual argument for privacy is that, is that it's just human right, or that uh, it's something that everybody wants, even if they don't think they need it in the moment. But I think that's one, something that people don't really talk about, is why people need privacy on Ethereum specifically. And I think there's a, there's a, um, this is interesting because Ethereum users need privacy more than any other blockchain because Ethereum has DeFi, that's because Ethereum has DApps. Um, the more people use Ethereum for different applications, the more they need privacy. And uh, because there are network effects in Ethereum and DeFi, uh, users tend to leak more data than on any other chain. Because in any other chain, yeah, because in any other chain like Monero or Zcash, you, you are just sending uh, crypto back and forth. You aren't necessarily linking the data to uh, on-chain smart contracts, but in, in Ethereum, your smart contracts have meaning, and the meaning is something that you stand to, that it is your personal data, that you stand to be, that you stand to lose. Now, you stand to lose privacy because uh, your identity might be linked to that on-chain activity in DeFi and other smart contracts, like if you go to an event on Kickback and you use your, your, uh, your address to sign up for that, for that event, now someone knows that you went for that or didn't. Or if you just buy coffee, now the battery star can stop you because they know your, your balance. And then they can link that to other DeFi apps. So that's not good. So you want to fix that with uh, any way possible and Mixer, Mixer's are one step towards uh, adding more privacy to Ethereum. Uh, there is a fantastic report on the state of Mixer's that I've been able to read. This is like a broader overview of all the Mixer's out there right now. Uh, but Today I'm going to focus on microlinks. So how does it work? Uh, yeah. So there are two transactions. The user only does one transaction to deposit F into the contract. Uh, this is and when they when they do that, uh, they also pass in the an identity commitment, which is the hash of a uh, EDDSA public key and some random data. When they want to withdraw, they generate a ZK snap proof that of their uh, membership in the set of all identity commitments already in the smart contract. They send it to a relayer. The relay, uh, the relayer contract uh, passes on the uh, the proof to the uh, Micromix smart contract, which verifies the proof and sends back the ETH to the recipient. But it also sends back a reward to the relayer. So the user doesn't have to pay gas to withdraw. Uh, and this is good because if they had to pay gas, they would, they would have to get the gas or the ETH to pay the gas and that would defeat the purpose of a mixer in the first place. So at the risk of a demo failing and a room full of people, I can show you a demo. So this is a micro mix of app. It's the one with Coven. Uh, supports 0.1 app deposits or 20 die. Uh, deposits. So let's just mix 0.1F. So this is where we deposit the funds. Uh, 
and it's just going to uh, take a long time because it's a, it's a live demo. Uh, what is, oh, perfect. <laughs> uh, so what we do here is that um, the goal is to uh, educate users to leave the deposits as long as possible. We, we don't want to uh, tell users that the more deposits there are, the more privacy you have, because it's possible for a, spam, for a spammer to fill in the, the, the pool of deposits with their, own, uh, with their own funds and give a false impression that the anonymity pool is, is very large. But when in fact they might know most of the transactions and be able to leave and advise you uh, because they, they, they spam the pool with it. So what we're trying to do here is just to encourage users to have, uh, have, have better uh, best practices and better uh, anti-heuristic uh, anti based attack uh, 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 behavior in order to maximize the privacy. So what we do here is that we just encourage them to withdraw only after uh, midnight UTC on the day that they, they deposit uh, so that they don't, they aren't told that like the bigger the pool, the, the more privacy you have. Uh, but there are there can be better ways to educate users, and this is just one way. Uh, for the sake of a demo, you can also you can basically uh, generate the do the withdrawal right now, uh, which is not something we don't encourage. This is where we uh, generate the zk snap proof. We download all the identity commitments from the smart contract. We generate the merger proof. Um, uh, we download the zk snap circuit and the proven key, and then we. Uh, which is, this takes like 30 seconds to because it's uh, because the case now take a long time to prove but a short time to verify uh, and while this runs I'm going to go to the next slide okay so uh, yeah so this is more like a, a deeper uh, more details about the architecture of Metronix we have the UI, we have uh, EDDSA key stored inside the user's browser in local storage. Uh, the reason that we use EDDSA keys for the identity commitment is because uh, this is more stack friendly than ECDSA keys. Um, and this poses a challenge for wallet providers because we, we need to have uh, better ways to store this key. For the, for the purposes of this demo, it's not encrypted or anything like that. Um, but there's a whole there's a whole topic that we can cover in a different in a different discussion. Uh, we have uh, we, it's all linked to the contract, and we have uh, a relay server that has an API that accepts proofs and also manages the nums uh, for sending the withdrawal transaction to the uh, smart contract. Uh, right now, this uh, this contract supports either zero zero point one. Uh, covert F or 20 DAI deposits. The uh, reason that we have fixed amounts is that we want that if we have big, that we can't support arbitrary amounts because that would de-anonymize users. Uh, relayer pays for gas. Right now we are using a centralized relayer, uh, but in the future we're going to have a relay network where we have different relays that compete on fees to. Uh, to, to, to compete for the for users to uh, send their transactions to relay and get rewards in return. We have that corner timer, we have a function that lets you generate the proof and send it as a transaction and pay the gas for that in case you need to withdraw early. Uh, and we allow you to, we, we have the in-browser proof generation that lets it work in the web browser and is deploying a program right now. Uh, before I go into the more technical details about server for which is the underlying ZK Snap gadget that powers the whole thing. Let's see if it's done. All right, it's downloading it. So uh, right now, you can see that it's still generating a proof. It needs two pieces of data, the circuit and the proving key. The circuit is 15 gig, uh, sorry, 15 max JSON, uh, and the proving key is like 20 plus max JSON. Um, and it just takes like, like 30 seconds to minute. It's verifying it in the browser just to just to be sure that it can that it that it's valid. Uh, and it's just generating a proof and it's gonna send it to uh, the relayer 
which we will send it to this, to the uh, open testnet. So fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the user pays no gas for this because uh, the user just sends the transaction data off chain to an API. Um, and we will see how the smart contract sends back a small, a small portion as a reward to the relayer and the bulk of the funds to the receiver address. see that this is a reward for the relayer and this is the funds that are actually mixed. So it, it worked? Yeah. Uh, and I have 10 more minutes to go into the uh, technical details, but anybody have any questions right now? It's a gas cost? Uh, quite high. <laughs> <laughs> uh, gas cost for withdrawals are uh, uh, seven, one thousand. Uh, the gas cost is this high because we have uh, we support to the power of 20 deposits. Uh, if we support lower a lower number of deposits, then the gas cost will decrease. Yeah. Yes. Do both uh, depositor and the receiver has to trust the relayer? If the uh, relayer is wrong, what is going to happen? The relayer can censor transactions, uh, but the relayer cannot cannot like change the rules to, 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 so they don't have to trust the media, but they just need to trust the media to be, to, to send the transaction. They don't have to trust it possibly. After deposit, I took it away, I don't need to do any more relay for you. Is that oh, the they, that they happen? deposit directly to the contract. Yeah. The relay only sends, passes along the core data for the, for the proof. To, to withdraw the funds. Or they could, just, they could, if they don't do it, they can ask a different relayer to do the same. Yeah. All right, uh, last question. <coughs> uh, so this is dope, and thank you for your service. <laughs> um, so like, we have like two measures of like the activity of this contract, which is, I guess, like the number of deposits in practice, like the number of withdrawals. And like, for a given deposit, you can look at the number of withdrawals that have occurred since then to like, get a very, very weak notion of like what the anonymity set is. Yeah. If you're thinking about this like more seriously, like what heuristic can you use to determine the safety of a mix and work like this one? Wow. Uh, that's a medical question. Cool. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, heuristic attacks are, uh, are, the, are the biggest weakness of this whole thing. So um, right now, apart from saying that we need to educate users on the best practices, uh, I don't know what the best practices are. Yeah. I think leaving it in the contract for as long as possible, and and not and, and educating users that the size of the pool is not necessarily the best metric of privacy. It's a tough question. Yeah, it's a very tough question. Yeah. Can you add noise by putting a bunch of extra contracts? Extra contracts? Or extra, you know, transactions and then. Yeah, it's just hard to measure. It's just hard to measure the effect. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, last one. Yeah. Can you run a relayer? Like, let's say I deposited my funds and next year I want to uh, withdraw it, but then there's no relay online. Can I run a relay? Oh, you can. You can. Anybody can run a relay. Yeah, but uh, so the relay system is something that's being built by Lakshman Saka, uh, who is uh, who is coming later today. Uh, it's, it's kind of out of scope of this of this presentation right now. Uh, okay, so in the next five minutes, I'll try to explain a bit more of the ZK stuff. Sorry, could you speak a bit louder? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. So basically. Uh, the mixer is one application of Semaphore, which is a ZK Stack circuit and smart contract. So what Semaphore does is uh, allows you to register your identity and allows you to broadcast any other tree string. Uh, and it prevents double signaling. Uh, so to apply Semaphore to a mixer, 
the identity registration is a deposit and withdrawing funds is broadcasting a signal. And in the same way that double signaling doesn't work, it prevents double spending. Um, this is the summary of the ZK Snap proof. It proves three things that the identity commitment exists inside the burger tree, that the signal was only broadcasted once. For this one, for the second one, it, it also relies on the storage of the smart contract to check whether a notifier exists inside the storage. But it also, but the circuit checks whether the hash uh, is valid. And finally, there's also an EDDSA signature verification that ensures that the given uh, that the that the public key that the user used uh, was a, was associated with the private key that used to sign the that was used to sign the hash of the signal and the external notifier. So in like three minutes, I can't explain the whole thing, but I'm happy to sit down with anybody just to dive into the code later. Uh, yeah, we're not going to do this like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so just to summarize, to deposit, we do these steps, and to withdraw, we send a proof to the, to the contract, uh, to the relay that is next to the contract. And yeah, as we mentioned, there's a whole, there's a really great paper about how uh, heuristics can de anonymize users. And this was, look, so they looked at Zcash. Um, so there's one, there's one downside of this system. Uh, the other downside is uh, ZK staff and smart contract uh, security, security flaws. And third of all is the trusted setup. So to mitigate the last two, first of all, we're having this ceremony where, where so any ZK staff uh, trusted setup is divided in two parts. The first phase is something that's common to all ZK snap circuits. And we are doing a offline party computation ceremony where anybody can join and uh, their share of that setup. And this is going to last forever as long as people want to do this. And any ZK snap circuit can take a point in this chain of, uh, of, of, of contributions and branch off to the second phase, which is the circuit specific trusted setup. So we are doing this something called a perpetual powers of power ceremony. So far, there have been like seven participants, uh, and uh, we are going to keep doing this. And we're going to pick a point at which we do the trusted setup for the mixer. And we are also funded by POA Network and the EF for an ongoing audit. Uh, and we are just uh, going through this process right now. So we are very grateful to EF and UA Network for this for to make to make this possible. Uh, and we want to validate that you can't double spend, that you, you can only withdraw if you know the party key and you can't like mint money. Uh, this is the name of the relay network, uh the Um definitely check it out. <coughs> and Finally, all the source code is open source. Uh, you can find me at, at the conference. I'll be, I'm happy to answer any questions in person. And thank you so much for coming. <laughs>